Hi, this is Theo from ParkerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to show you the first fountain pen that I've ever bought. This is the Hero 501. This is a really old fountain pen. I cannot remember exactly when I bought this, probably around 2009. That's the same time when I joined Urban Sketches Singapore and some of my friends there, they were using the Hero fountain pen. I'm not sure which model but I got inspired by them and went out to buy one on my own. So I bought the model 501-1 and this is it. I like it so much that I bought a backup. So this is my backup. You can see the difference in terms of quality. Now the first pen that I have, the surface finishing is not as good. It's like it's lacquered or something. You can see this um, surface finishing. It's not as smooth compared to this pen here. So the quality control is a bit inconsistent. This is the clip and this is how the surface finishing looks like compare that to the other one that I have so this is sort of like almost glossy but this is like it's painted on the model number is Kaftier 501-1 there are different models of Hero fountain pens and different models have different numbers they are all carved around the cap area and this is the logo I'm not sure what metal was used to make this pen but it doesn't look like steel to me it has a nice weight it's on the heavier side but it's not too heavy so the cap is a click on type of cap and this is the nib that's inside this is a Fude nib a Fude nib is a nib that is curved at the end here so it curves up and there is this broad area that you can use to create very thick lines and if you tilt the pen vertically you can use this tip here to draw thin lines so this nib is capable of producing thick and thin lines it has a nice variation I'm not sure what metal was used to create this uh, nib or what metal was used to pleat the color here it says Hero 22 GF and that's the logo. Let's take a look at the feet section behind. So it looks something like this. If you want to dismantle the nib from the grip section, you can actually just pull it out. It's a bit difficult to pull out. Just twist it very slightly and pull it out. So this is how it looks like. So you can actually clean the pen more thoroughly by dismantling it. And when you want to put it back, just make sure that the nib it extends out like this. Press it down and just push it back. All right, this is back in. If there is misalignment, like this line here is not centered, then you have to dismantle this and rearrange it and put it back. But it's really uh, very easy. Let's take a look at what's inside. Oh, mine doesn't come with a converter because I took it out. The Hero fountain pen comes with an ink converter. So the one that I have here is a uh, plunger type sometimes it may come with the twist type converter this by the way is another model of hero pen you can see the food in nib as well this converters uh, they are interchangeable the one with the plunger may actually hold less ink but it is more convenient to use because um, in one swift movement you can actually suck up the ink quite quickly as compared to this where you have to twist a few times I think this converter is sometimes called the piston converter I prefer that one so I'm going to use it today with my Hero 501 and this is the other Hero fountain pen so there are different models of Hero fountain pens the one that I have and the one that I like is the 
501 because it's a bit smaller in diameter. All right, let's fill this pen with ink and see how it performs. By the way, I'm not using my old fountain pen because it's clogged beyond repair. So now I'm using the new one. So it's really easy to refill ink with this converter. If I'm not wrong, the Fudinib was originally designed for Asian calligraphy. For example, to write words like this. I'm not very good at writing Chinese words, but I'll try. So you can see the lines are very thick. And these words, they actually mean art pen. Let me try writing English letters. So the nib is able to create broad strokes and thin lines. So here you can see this line here is broader compared to this vertical line. And here it changes the thickness, it changes slightly. If you make a more conscious effort to tilt the pen, then you can get more variation. Uh, for example, now I'm writing with the tip of my pen. And as I tilt it downwards slightly, I'm using the broad side of the Fude nib to get the very thick lines. And usually when I'm drawing with this pen, I don't really pay attention to how I'm holding. I just use it as per normal. Let me do a quick sketching demo with this pen. And if you want to shade in really uh, black areas, you can just use the broad nib to do it. It's really quick. So that is one really neat advantage of this particular pen. You can see the variation in terms of the thickness here. I went from thick to thin. Sometimes when you want thin lines, you can make a very uh, conscious decision, a conscious effort to get those thin lines. For example, uh, in this area here, for this hoodie, I want it to be thin. I would tilt my pen upwards. And as this hoodie moves to the foreground, I will use the thick line to draw that. and then transition to the thin. Let's try some cross hatching. The ink flow is quite good. And for cross hatching, I like to use the tip for the thinner lines. And for the hair, perhaps I'll use the broad strokes to um, just draw. So I can create lots of interesting patterns. Of course, when using the broad side of the nib, this is going to use up more ink. So this pen, it tends to use up ink uh, quite quickly. The lines that this pen can create, it's really expressive. I really like it. Compared to fountain pens that only give you the medium or the fine nib, I can get variations here. And that variation really makes the sketch look uh, more interesting. And also because there is this um, unpredictability, sometimes you don't know whether the, or not the ink will, the lines will be darker or thinner, and it makes it really more fun. I can also turn the nib around and draw uh, really thin lines. This is a really fun pen to use and it's very affordable. You can find this on Amazon or on eBay. I bought this around 30 Singapore dollars. It's probably around 20 US or maybe less depending on which model you buy. But just make sure to get the one with the food in it if you want variations in terms of thickness.
Earlier on, I talked about the quality control. It can be a hit and miss. I have bought Hero Fountain pens before where they work for two weeks and they just stop working for whatever reason. Not this particular brand though. But for this pen, I used it for a few years before it became unusable. And this new pen that I'm using, I hope it can last longer. I think with proper maintenance, it should last uh, for a longer time. That's all for my review today. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next pen review video. Bye.